Thanks, and hello everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, delivering a complete electromechanical design with Autodesk Vault. So we'll be talking about a few aspects of that. Um, starting out with just a, uh, an overview of what at least what I consider a, a complete uh, design or a set of design deliverables. You know, every company is different in terms of what they provide, but uh, there are generally a few standard things that you need to provide in order to describe a design and have somebody, uh, you know, build it, assemble it, etc. So we'll talk about that. Then we'll move on to uh, some examples of managing mechanical design data um, and especially managing from different sources. So when you've got, um, say, multiple CAD packages in use in your environment, um, we'll be including managing bombs and you know non-CAD data viewables, uh, neutral formats for manufacturing, et cetera. Uh, then we'll move on to a review of electrical design data, uh, specifically in this case using AutoCAD Electrical and the management of that data using Autodesk Vault. Uh, and then we'll see how you could put the whole thing together and deliver uh, um, at least what from outside of engineering appears to be a complete unified design, um, everything in the same location, described the same way, viewed the same way, interacted with the same way. Um, so that's the goal for today. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about design deliverables and um, again, what I would consider, you know, set of deliverables or what I mean by deliverables. Um, that really means just, really just means fully documenting um, an engineering design. So there will typically be some native CAD files, um, both mechanical and electrical, describing you know, the physical aspects of the system, um, the logical aspects of the system, and um, you know, how things get wired up, the control system. Um, there will typically be some neutral format CAD files, like uh, DXF for sheet metal flat patterns or, or you know, for a burn table or something or a step file that you might import into a CAM package. Uh, there will be results of those CAM operations, uh, like NC files, uh, PLC programs uh, that result from the electrical department, you know, programming uh, the logic. There will always, almost always be a bill of materials, right? Things you've got to make, some things you've got to buy. And then there could be, any number of supporting documents, uh, assembly instructions, manuals, spec sheets, MSDS sheets for things you've purchased, um, renderings, just any number of, of things in support of uh, that design to describe it, explain how it needs to be built, how it needs to be used, etc. So there's a lot that goes into you know, starting, say, from zero and then describing to a host of parties outside of engineering what needs to be done to execute that design and make it a reality. Um, and it can be difficult to manage all of that. Uh, there are so many different file types. There are different use cases for the different data. Um, I will say managing the CAD data is usually the trickiest part of that. Uh, most of the other file types, be it like a PDF of an assembly instruction document or even uh, the output of a CAM package like an NC file or even a PLC program, um, the end result of those things could be managed in a lot of different solutions. Um, Windows folders can be effective, SharePoint, Dropbox, lots of different places and ways you could manage non-CAD data um, because that data is typically not complex. But when you're talking about CAD data, especially parametric CAD data, uh, that data is complex. And most companies do use parametric CAD solutions these days um, for, for their design work. Uh, Inventor and SolidWorks are both very common. And increasingly these days, I talk with companies that have a mix of both. Um, largely through acquisition. You know, it, a few times a week, at least, I talk with companies that, you know, through one way or another have ended up with a sister company or 
you know, as part now of like a conglomerate or a larger corporate entity. And um, there's almost always a goal, especially when you're talking about a merger to sort of unify engineering departments and get everybody on the same page and be able to design things anywhere and execute like build from anywhere. And that can be a real challenge if the businesses are using different parametric CAD software because there's no easy button really to just switch from one to another. Um, and managing that data is complex. Um, so typically, most companies that we work with these days have a, what you would call a PDM solution, a product data management solution uh, to manage that parametric CAD data. And if you don't have one like Vaults or you know an equivalent from some other vendor, then you really should consider it. Um, it really is a best practice to, to have some software to help you manage your parametric CAD data. Um, if you don't have one or you know, to to figure out how maybe your company ended up with what they have. Um, you know, if you're using a single CAD solution, say you're only using Inventor or only using SolidWorks, you're usually gonna be better off with the solution provided by that software vendor. So if you're using Inventor, Vault is almost certainly gonna be your best bet if you're looking for something on-premise. There are some other solutions as well, but, um, the, the reason being, um, the first party solution, PDM solution for your CAD software is gonna provide typically the best support for all of the various obscure pieces of functionality or bits of functionality for that CAD application. A good example would be uh, iParts and iAssemblies in Inventor or model states now, um, or, um, you know, tube and pipe or cable and harness, stuff like that, um, or configurations in SolidWorks or the SolidWorks toolbox or the Inventor Content Center. Um, lots of third-party PDM solutions do a pretty good job of managing the some of the files, but when you need to get beyond just basic, you know, here's an assembly with a part and a drawing, um, you really need to pay close attention to the PDM solution you might be choosing or the one that you're currently using to see, does it really support all of the features that you use within your CAD system? Um, that goes especially for AutoCAD Electrical. Um, I consider AutoCAD Electrical essentially to some degree parametric. It, it behaves in a similar way to the 3D packages where you've got file relationships and those things really behave as a unit. You need all of the files for things to work. Um, and AutoCAD Electrical specifically has some very particular behavior that I don't know that I've seen any other solution besides Autodesk Vault manage well. And we'll we'll get into a little bit of that later on. Right. Um, so let's kind of break this down a little bit though and talk about the management of mechanical design data first, then we'll move on to electrical. Uh, mechanical design data, um, there are various challenges when you're trying to manage it. Um, the bill of materials um, can often be complex in multiple levels. And uh, if you're using your parametric uh, environment correctly and your product line lends itself to it, uh, there's a lot of reuse of components. Uh, part might be used in 15 or 20 or 100 different assemblies. Um, and you need a system that can keep track of that. Um, both at a fundamental file level, but also if you're managing bills of material, um, you need to be able to, to keep track of that as well. Um, it's also important to understand that um, the bomb you might have inside your CAD system, be it Inventor or, or SolidWorks, um, does not necessarily and actually almost never equates to what I would call the engineering bomb. So the bomb that's in your CAD software, the CAD bomb, is usually the things that you needed to draw, the, the, the parts that actually have size and shape and a visual representation. Uh, but there are almost always some components that you need to specify as part of a mechanical assembly that it doesn't make any sense to draw. Paint, grease, lubricant, uh, you don't draw those things, but they need to be accounted for. And there are various ways within CAD software to account for those things. 
but uh, there can be better ways in your PDM system vault, especially to make that happen. Um, another very uh, strongly complicating factor, I would say, would be that both Inventor and SolidWorks have the ability to, to describe like a one-to-many relationship between a file and part numbers. So that would be configurations in SolidWorks or model states um, in Inventor, where you have one assembly file, let's say, and you have four or five different model states, and those different model states describe different part numbers because there's slight variations, maybe even as simple as color, um, where there's not even any physical difference between the components, but you just need to keep track of, we have five different colors of this thing. Um, and so we have five different, there's no need necessarily to have five different assembly files to describe that. Um, you just need essentially five part numbers and that one physical descriptor. Um, so both Inventor and SolidWorks have the ability to, to account for this. And um, it can be challenging to manage that from a BOM data perspective. Uh, tracking revisions, uh, the fact that files are related to each other and uh, an assembly might use a part and that part might get revised, depending on what you consider a revision, that might not really impact the the form fit or function of the component. And so the assembly may not necessarily need to be revised, but you still need to know, you know, historically, what did Rev A of the assembly actually use, even though we're on Rev C of the part now, keeping track of that can be difficult. And then sharing with non-CAD users the, uh, the data, like being able to see a 3D model or a 2D drawing, um, especially without making a hard copy. You know, so there can be a lot of challenges with, with maintaining and sharing uh, this data. Um, now, Autodesk Vault can help with all of that. Um, so just some of the highlights of what Vault can do, and we're gonna see an example of that here in just a second. Vault can manage both files and part numbers, right? So in my mind, a file, like an IPT or SLD PRT, that's a file describing something in 3D. Um, that may or may not be related to a part number. Right? It may be related to multiple part numbers. Um, the fact that Vault separates files from part numbers can be a huge benefit in this case. Um, because it can maintain, again, that one-to-many relationship. This one file describes many different part numbers, potentially. Right. Um, Vault also allows manipulation of the bomb data to massage it into the final EBOM. Right. You can turn rows on and off. You can add components to the bomb in Vault uh, and flesh out that bill of materials so that you don't have to use something like Microsoft Excel or things like virtual components in Inventor, which can be useful, but then you find yourself repeatedly typing the same part numbers over and over again when you add the same you know, paint uh, with a certain part number every time or Loctite or something like that. Um, Vault also manages revisions very well um, and for all references. So you can easily see what changed and when, what the current rev is of everything, what rev was used by which specific revision of an assembly or, or what have you. And then Vault can also automatically create those 2D and 3D visualization files so that it's easier to share data with people outside of engineering that don't have CAD. So let's take a look at this now. We're gonna spend a fair amount of time looking at software today. Um, so we're going to start with uh, an inventor assembly, an example. Um, we're going to show you can create uh, uh, an engineering bomb from the CAD bomb data, or actually multiple bombs in this case. Um, create viewables, you know, 2D and 3D versions, creating step files of solid models, uh, managing revision. We're going to see that. We're going to look then at SolidWorks and how that sort of same workflow would work within SolidWorks and Vault. Um, and then see how you could actually combine data from both sources 
into a single unified bill of materials. Um, say, for example, in this case, 90% of the assembly is designed in Inventor, but there's one subassembly that a subsidiary designs in SolidWorks. Vault can bring all of that together. And as far as an end user concern is concerned, they don't know where the data came from. They just consume it. All right, so let's take an example, take a look at an example of that. So we're looking here at Inventor. Um, and you can see that we have a few different model states here describing a car seat. You got a black seat and there's a, a special component for that guy. Um, it's got its own eye properties, its own specific part number and description. And we've got a gray iteration with obviously with its own eye properties. Um, and then of course, like the base model as well, right? With its properties. So these are just model states in Inventor. Um, the idea here is Vault can understand these things, right? So this guy's already in my Vault. So if I go to that Vault, if I wanna now create a bill of materials from this Inventor assembly, I would just assign an item to that assembly. Um, and that's gonna extract the data from the inventor assembly and you notice that little icon there in vault means it actually created a whole bunch of part numbers for me automatically um, now if we look specifically at the assembly we can see it actually created four base part numbers from that one assembly file um, for the three different iterations of the assembly and also for the virtual component describing the heating assembly so that one document that one iam describes four different part numbers we can create that link in Vault automatically. Vault just extracts it for us. And we can see with that black seat, the heating assembly is on the bomb, but on the others, it's not, right? So the bomb is accurate with that data from Inventor. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna say this guy's done. We checked our work already. We're gonna release this assembly. And now all of the components that you were in use by that assembly are also now released. You see a bunch of padlocks there, right? If we look at one of the other sub-assemblies though, the top level sub-assembly for the gray seed is not released just yet, um, but all of the components it used actually are, right? So these same components are used in three different assemblies. We didn't end up with, you know, what, 60 different part numbers. We ended up with 28, the 25 they all use in common and then the three top level. Now we need some step files of some subcomponents, and maybe a PDF. And what Vault is designed here to do is in conjunction with its job processor and an add-on for that called Cool Orange Power Jobs, um, we actually have a custom job here that when an item is released, um, it will actually create a step file of the solid model. It will create a PDF of any of the drawings related to that part number. Um, and reassociate those things with the item record so that when someone goes and looks at that part number, they'll see the, the relevant non-CAD supporting documentation automatically, right? So we're looking here again at the top level assembly that released. Once that job gets done, we'll see the step file of the model and a PDF of that drawing, again, automatically um, based on release, right? So there we go. So now here's a PDF. So now anyone, no matter what, could just get a copy of that PDF and look at it. They don't need CAD, but they have a high fidelity drawing from Inventor. And we know it's up to date because it was processed automatically. Right? That would go for revision too. If a change happened, the change would get processed automatically and the PDF would get updated automatically. And the same can go in that same operation for a subcomponent where we need a step file say to pass on to the to the you know manufacturing group to use with cam now they've got the step file that they need uh, to to work now we need to do a revision notice everything's locked for us I unlocked I changed the status of that item to uh, work in progress right so we're released right now everything's locked up we need to make a revision change it to work in progress. Notice that the revision goes from A to B, right? We now have work in progress rev B in addition to our original release rev A. And now my CAD file is gonna get unlocked too, so now I can check it out and make a change. And we're just gonna make a simple change here. All 
right? So over in Inventor, I can just open this guy up, make a simple change, check it back in. And then we can re-release that item. And then we'll see what impact that has on the bill of materials, right? Because we're not doing anything to the top level assembly, right? We're just changing one of its subcomponents here. And maybe in this case, even though the change I'm about to make might look like it changes the form fit and function, we'll pretend that it doesn't. So we'll say this is a valid, <laughs> a valid revision here that doesn't negatively impact its containing assembly. So we just check this guy in, <clears throat> go back to vaults and re-release the item. Job goes back into the queue to make that step file. So again, you know, when we say we need to make rev B, the step file will be there ready to go for, uh, for manufacturing. And now we've got rev B released, although you can't do that yet because I didn't update the item because something might have changed in the bomb description or you know what have you. So you need to make sure that the part number is up to date. Vault let, won't let you do something you shouldn't, right? So we can even see in the thumbnail there, we've got a little feature, extra feature. So save, and now we should be able to release this and then see what impact it has on our top level bomb. So there we go. This guy's released. Job goes back in the queue to have step file updated. Right? And you'll see the step file version go from version two to three here in just a second, if you see down there below. Right. And now anywhere this is used, um, it's going to be that assembly will refer, if you look at the latest data, it will refer to revision B. So here's our original assembly. We can see now that rear pivot lock plate is rev B. But that's showing the latest data. If we look specifically at what was released as rev A, the lock plate was rev A when the assembly was released as rev A. Right? And if there's ever any concern about what changed compared to the latest versus you know what was released, you can always do a comparison here in Vault and see specifically it lights up, okay, something changed about this component, actually. It was Rev A, now it's Rev B. So that's how things might work in Inventor, right? Pretty straightforward, I think, right? We started with an assembly, we created a bill of materials, even made a revision, you know, in all of you know, less than 10 minutes. So let's take a look at what it might look like in SolidWorks. So here's a SolidWorks assembly, right? Um, we have a drawing somewhere of that as well. So you we can just crack that open too, right? And this is already in the vault right now, just getting it open so you can take a look at it, right? But, you know, it's a relatively simple assembly. Uh, it's got, you know, one little sub-assembly associated with it as well. Um, these documents have properties. You know, if you see over here on the right, there's a part number, product, property, rev property, manufacturer, right? So if we go back to Vault, um, we can see that assembly is already here inside our Vault. Just go back up one level over there, right? So the exact same workflow, assembly is in Vault, assign item, Vault, extracts the bill of materials from what was checked in from the CAD application, um, including the property values, right? And it knows that there's a drawing associated with it as well. So those same property values, again, that were described over here in SOLIDWORKS are captured in the vault as well, right? So aside from the icons being different, you know, uh, 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 a user might not even know where this thing originated, right? It all kind of looks the same. Again, we're creating all these items for the children all at once. And the process would be the same. Right? We 
have our assembly, we have our bill of materials, all of our items have been created. We're currently at Rev A. And now we can, just like we did with the first inventor assembly, we can release this. And everything's released. And in this case, what I have the system configured to do is um, Power Jobs will actually queue up the DWF creation for uh, the SolidWorks assembly. Right? So uh, Vault natively, um, Vault Pro can create with its job processor DWF files of SolidWorks assemblies and drawings. Um, it is a little bit slow, it warns you about that, um, but it ultimately can be done. And so the end result ultimately is that um, an end user, especially of the Vault Thin client, which we'll see in a little bit, um, they have the same experience regardless of the source data, whether it came from SolidWorks or Inventor, they don't need to have any applica viewing applications installed, they don't need to download any files, they can just go to the Vault Thin client, they can type in a part number, they can look at its bill of materials, look at any of the drawings, look at any of the 3D models, all inside of their browser without ever having to download anything. So if we need to combine these together now, so that's our end goal, is this is like the seat, most of the seat assembly was done in Inventor, one little bit was done in SolidWorks. You know, these are basically two top level sub assemblies of a larger part number. In Vault, we can actually create a part number, you know, from scratch, sort of, without any relation to CAD data, and combine these two sub-assemblies into the top-level part number. Right. So we've got a number from Vault. Um, we can, you know, describe it, put in, like, its title, description, any of its, uh, any of its properties that we might need. Um, this could even have been imported from an ERP system. And then after the fact, after we get our mechanical assemblies done, we can go and link, um, you know, these two top level mechanical sub assemblies to the seat, right? So I just add these from my now existing and released assemblies inside the vault, right? Our uh, inventor assembly. and our SOLIDWORKS subassembly as well, that should already be released. So I didn't have to open Excel and do a bunch of copy and paste and rearrange all that stuff, but just here's the subassembly. And so if that SOLIDWORKS subassembly is used in like 15 different seats, you know, you've just got these 15 different top level part numbers and you just add that SOLIDWORKS subassembly each time and you're done, right? couple clicks and picks and you're done and now your your uh, top level assembly is done and now in this case the black seat top level sub hadn't been released yet but I can release that when I release the top level sub right so work in progress change the status of the top level sub release the inventor assembly along with it and the SOLIDWORKS assembly is already released right so everything's good to go now, how people might consume this data, again, is through the Vault Thin client, right? So if they go in there looking for that seed, whether they have the part number or a descriptor, right, they could go and search for that, right? So we know it's an item in this case, it's a part number, so we're gonna search on items and type in our descriptor. There's our part number. It's released, Rev A, right? We can review its bill of materials, um, everything that came from a CAD system, right? So we can see all that same data. In this view, you really have no idea where it came from. Inventor SolidWorks doesn't really matter, um, right? We can go look at the associated files, view, this is the, the inventor subassembly, right? We can view that using the, the built-in viewer in the Vault Thin client. You can do explosions. Um, you can take measurements. You can review the assembly structure, right? Again, this is all in the browser, no file download, no uh, viewing software installed. Um, you can do this on any device in any browser that can render, render I think it's WebGL, I think is the, the 
you know, graphics engine that would be used. Um, but most devices can, could render this page. They just need to be on your network. Um, and then the same would go for the uh, SOLIDWORKS assembly, right? So again, if we were looking for our seat here and we wanted to look at the SOLIDWORKS assembly, inst assembly instead, yeah, the file name underlying it is different and the icon's a little different, but it's the same experience, right? Same viewer, same tool set, everything. So that's a look at managing parametric mechanical CAD data and combining it and then the end user experience for how they might actually consume it. Uh, and drawings would work similarly here. Um, and you could also do PDF as well. This viewer will be PDFs without having to download them as well. Okay, so um, I think we'll move on now to uh, our electrical design data management. Um, Inventor and SolidWorks work very similarly. Um, parametric CAD data, parts, assemblies, drawings, and I think a lot of mechanical folks have a pretty good understanding of that. Um, electrical design data, there are a lot of different ways that it gets handled. Um, and before I move on, I see a question just came in. I'd like to address it in line with everything here. Um, so the question is, we have issues with the web vault viewer when looking to review an assembly. It does not get the children, so it will not open the assembly without missing many items. That's a great question. So I will say that the Vault Thin Client, and this would go for either Inventor or SolidWorks, it is not designed to view the native CAD data. So the Thin Client, um, this is the Vault Thin Client that we're looking at right here. Um, depending on how you have your system configured, you can have lots of different, you can show files, you can show things released or work in progress. Um, if I were to go to, any random folder here in my vault and find a random assembly here. I can look at its where use data, or sorry, its uses data, and see here are the here's the part that it uses. Um, the vault thin client is not designed to download parent files with all of its references. So it just it's not that's not the purpose. Um, if I choose to download this assembly, the only thing it's going to download is the IAM file itself. If I want to view the native files, I would have to know that I need to download all of these children, which I could. I could go here one by one and download file. Um, there's also another shortcut you could take. If everything you need is in one folder, technically, you could check a bunch of boxes and download in bulk. Right, um, but that's not that's not ideal either. It's really not built for that. Um, that's why what you saw there in that video and what I could show you here as well is this view here is based around a DWF file. So the DWF file um, is a viewable format. It's a single document. It could be downloaded and viewed with uh, Autodesk Design Review, or it can be viewed inside the thin client. And this is the ideal way to view depending on your need. So I can do exploded views, I can take measurements, I can even do markups here. Uh, but notice the little tilde there on the measurement. That is technically an approximation. This 3D data here is not precise to the level that it would be with the native data inside Inventor or SolidWorks. Um, so if you need to view the native data, like if you need to take precise measurements off of assemblies, this may not be good enough. In that case, what you really need to use is a Vault Thick client. Um, if you're only a viewer of CAD data, you can use the Vault Office client, which is much less expensive than the Vault Professional client but then you can view 
the assembly using, say, inventor view or eDrawings to get to a view of the actual native data. But this will let you get all of the files necessary. The Vault Thick client will let you get all of the files. Okay, so let's move on now and talk about AutoCAD electrical and electrical design data. So uh, there are several different packages out there. Well, there are lots of different packages for electrical data in general. Talking about electrical data, that's a pretty broad term. Um, I'm specifically talking today about control schematics. Um, you know, you've got machinery, you've got actuators, you've got sensors, you've got PLCs that control all of that stuff. That's what we're talking about in the context really of this, like an electromechanical thing. We've got things that move, they need to be moved, we need to know where they are, right? We need controls to do that. Um, now, a lot of people use AutoCAD or even AutoCAD LT. Um, it, that can be certainly very useful and very fast depending on what you're doing. Um, it's difficult to manage bombs with AutoCAD. There's no good way whatsoever to get it out of uh, AutoCAD unless you've got like heavy customization and custom programming. Um, that's a huge benefit of um, AutoCAD Electrical is it can speed up the schematic design process in general, um, but it also um, can assist with things like Bill's material, right? And so a question that just came in, what's the advantage of vault over reports in AutoCAD Electrical? So I'll be getting to that in just a minute. Um, but, you know, that's one thing that you'd need to do with AutoCAD Electrical is extract the bill of materials into, say, a spreadsheet or put it on a drawing. Um, and just like the parametric CAD data, like parametric mechanical CAD, um, your schematic may not have every last component that needs to go onto the bomb. So then how do you get the rest of the components onto the bomb? That's where Vault can help, right? Vault can help extract the bomb, Vault understands the relationship between your WDP, your AutoCAD electrical project file, your project line description files, your uh, project specific title block files, all those WDX files um, that might be associated with a project. Vault understands all of those. Um, some other challenges, the data for the bomb is spread across multiple drawings, typically in an electrical project. Um, and even though they are, multiple drawings, an AutoCAD electrical project really is sort of a monolith. Um, it's a, um, it really should be treated as a unit. There are multiple drawings, but they all work together to describe one design. Right? And again, getting to that complete engineering bomb can be tedious. A lot of times you've got to start from electrical, open it up in Excel, and then do some more things to it, especially add components to it. Um, or maybe there's extra data that you can't or don't want to maintain in your AutoCAD electrical catalog but needs to go on to your bomb, right? That's another good fit for, for Vault's bomb generation, right? So again, Vault can manage all aspects of the electrical design. The WDL file, obviously the WDP, all of the drawings that are related to it. Um, just like the 3D packages, Vault can extract the bill of materials from the electrical design. And then Vault can actually manage the project line description. So um, if you want to maintain a consistent description and maybe a rev level for the project, um, you know, Vault can help with that as well. So let's take a look now at how you might manage AutoCAD electrical data. So I'm starting here in Venter. Um, this is sort of the, the design we have. We've got a printer. Um, this printer is already, its bill of materials is already extracted and largely um, released. Um, inside the vault, there's just like one extra component we haven't quite finished yet. And then of course the top level assembly itself. Um, but there are a couple other aspects to this. Um, there's uh, the electrical design, of course. And then there's a, uh, this is printers going onto a production line and we need to know when the printer's down. And so we've got a little external box with a light and a horn and a button, um, right? But that was done in SolidWorks. That, external bit was done in SOLIDWORKS. The top, the printer itself is designed here in Inventor and then electrical is where we have the schematic design, right? 
Um, so let's take a look at um, the AutoCAD electrical side of things um, and um, how we would manage that AutoCAD electrical design. So here's AutoCAD Electrical, a relatively simple project. Um, I've got a connections diagram, you know, point to point um, connection. And then there's also the second sheet that's got the schematic for the external bit, right? Just a, a button, a light, a horn, right? And so we need to manage this design still, right? We've got a couple drawings. Um, we need those drawings to be described. So the, capture their parts associated with this right um and so again just like our um you know here's the external box i was talking about right that we have in solidworks that's already in the vaults as well um so to manage the electrical design obviously vault can check it in it's already checked into the vault right now you can see those little circles over there those project line descriptions these are all captured and Maybe I copied this from our previous project. The red was two in that case. I want to make sure and reset this back to red one. Um, notice electrical automatically checked out that file for me. I didn't have to check in, check out. That's a great thing about the vault add-in for AutoCAD electrical is it automatically checks things out for you when necessary and then checks them back in so that you don't have to worry about that. It hides a lot of that stuff behind the scenes for you, I think, which is great. Um, now, one thing Vault doesn't do a great job with in terms of AutoCAD electrical projects is creating uh, that really nice PDF from AutoCAD electrical that has all of the cross page references. Um, so that's one thing that I recommend if you're using Vault to manage AutoCAD electrical, you still probably want to manually create that PDF from electrical because nothing else really does that very well or without a lot of difficulty. So it's in my mind easier to make this guy, publish it to your workspace and then add that into the vault. And then it can be managed from there, right? So we still make that manually, right? And it's, you know, it's cooking right now. Eventually when it's done, we'll add that to the vaults. And then when we have the bomb done in vault, we can associate that PDF with the part number. So that again, if someone comes across this part number, they have the PDF of the schematics um, without having to do any other digging or searching, right? So we're just kind of waiting for that PDF to get done. Let's uh, take a look at that, right? So that's the electrical PDF. You know, if you've used electrical, you've probably seen that. Mine, my plot settings were not very good at all, right? So, um, so now let's take a look. These files are in vaults. Um, we've got the project file there. Um, we can add our PDF to the vaults as well. And if we want, we can even associate that PDF to the WDP. Um, we can also just link it directly to the item eventually, which I think is what we'll do. Right? So we've got our all of our files here. Again, the line descriptions, the project file, et cetera. Um, and so again, just like we created the bill of materials from the parametric CAD data, we can essentially follow the same workflow uh, in for electrical in vault to create that bill of materials. Right. So, you know, I just use that same assign item command. It extracts the data. So this is the same workflow, whether it's mechanical or electrical, you end up in the same spot. All of the related files are linked to the item. The bill of materials is extracted. One of the really nice things I think about the bill of materials for an electrical design in Vault is in addition to looking at uh, sort of the, the flat bomb, and here I'm just gonna quickly add the, the PDF of the, uh, uh, that came from electrical, right? So that it's easy for people to get to, right? Um, with the bill of materials that gets extracted, um, you can also look at um, what's called reference designator information in Vault. So tag, location, and installation codes. So right now we're just looking at sort of the flat bomb, you know, all the components rolled up, et cetera. Um, but we can also view this thing um, in more of an electrical 
view, right? So our everything's created now. Um, everything got extracted. You know, all of those tags and like PB200 and external, that's all information that's really associated with these components. So I can switch my view from mechanical bill to the electrical bill. And now suddenly I have the location and installation coding tag for all of those components. So that can be a great way to view the bill um, depending on what you need to do. Um, that you can certainly get that as a report out from electrical. Um, I think it's harder to consume. And this you can very easily switch back and forth between um, showing component view versus um, say reference designator or like location installation code view just switch back and forth very easily so we've got this largely done now i think um we might need to make a change let's see we're running a little short on time so let's just kind of go through we'll just fast forward through here a little bit we're releasing our electrical assembly now it's all released um, notice this is a very important and very useful thing. Um, this is one of the, the connectors that was in the electrical design. You can see the drawing that it's used on. So if this connector gets used on 10, 20, 50 different projects and 10 different, 50 different drawings, um, every drawing that this plug has ever appeared on will be on this list. So if you have a, let's say you, there's a component, there was an issue, you need to know all the projects it's on and actually which drawings you need to go and fix. It's all right there in Vault. That to me is, is a huge benefit of using Vault to manage bills of material, is the where used not just in an assembly, but also down to the drawing level, right? Now, if we need to revise this assembly, notice the rev bumps to two. I can go to AutoCAD Electrical. I can go to update my line descriptions and it's smart enough, it's gonna warn me um, do you want to update your descriptions? Remember, it was Rev 1 before. This automatically will change the project line description to Rev 2 for me. So I didn't have to keep track of that. And then, of course, I use the standard title block um, update tool, right, to get all of that data pushed down to the drawings themselves, right, so that they'll be up to date as well, all that same information. Um, so now if I need to make a change, I can go back to my, we just need to add a, a button to turn off the horn, right, in this case, um, right, so we're just adding in a button, now we've got a new component on our design, right, fill it all out, location, save and check in, now we go back and update our item, and what we'll see is, we're gonna have a new button here, all right? So there, there's many components right now, right? And if we, after we update to point to the new design, we're gonna have a new component here. It's that push button there at the bottom, right? So we do our CAD work, we update in Vault, and our bomb is automatically up to date, right? And now we just release and we're good to go. Okay, so that's managing AutoCAD electrical data. Managing all of the associated files, extracting bill of materials, handling revisions, right? Now, there's lots of other data, like I discussed at the beginning, besides the CAD data, the viewables, PDFs, DWFs, CAM inputs and outputs, assembly instructions, spec sheets, software like PLC programs or firmware, right? Um, Keeping all of that together, keeping it all associated with the correct part number and the right revision, keeping it all linked together can be a serious challenge. A lot of times you end up with a folder on the network and that folder may have a bunch of different subfolders in it. Hopefully everybody follows the same naming scheme and hopefully that naming scheme has persisted over time. But as people have come and gone, things have changed. And so it can be a real challenge finding, okay, Rev A of this machine, what was the PLC program for that? 
because one of our customers is having an issue and I need to get into that program and debug it, how do you find that? Who knows, right? Vault, the great thing about Vault is it can keep all of that together. An item can reference any number of files, right? So you can put in PLC program, firmware, NC you know, code for a model file, a PDF of the drawing, um, assembly instructions, spec sheets, MSDS sheets, all of that stuff. The item is a perfect container for all of that stuff. Um, and again, depending on the application, you can actually auto-generate some of these things. Okay. Um, now let's take a look at kind of putting it all together. So here's the printer again. Um, you know, we have this one component down here that's not quite done because we need to, you know, we need to generate the NC code for that, right? We've actually done that already. Um, somebody added it to Vault earlier, so now I'm, as the bomb manager here, I'm just gonna go in there. I'm gonna grab the NC file and attach it to, um, to that component, right? So the NC file is already sitting in my Vault. So I'm gonna go dig it up and associate it with that part number, right? And so similarly, I need to add assembly instructions to the top level printer. Um, right, so now, and then we're gonna combine everything together, right? So here's our top level assembly, right, in Inventor. Now we need to add to it our electrical design and um, our uh, mechanic, our external SOLIDWORKS assembly, right? So here we go. We're gonna, just like we did earlier with the top level seat design, putting in the inventor assembly and the uh, SOLIDWORKS assembly. Similarly, we're gonna go and add in our electrical design, right? So that goes on the list. And then we're gonna add in our SOLIDWORKS design right, the external component there that's already been released and all that work's done, right? Um, and then we just need to release our top level assembly, right? So now everything's gonna be good to go. And now we've got, again, you know, our viewables, right? We go back to our thin client. Now this is what somebody would see when they look at the printer. The, the top level assembly here and then a couple rows at the bottom for the electrical um, assembly and the SOLIDWORKS assembly. Right, so here's the SOLIDWORKS assembly, its bill of materials, again, like we saw before, the viewable of that. Um, you know, they can go and view that just like if it was an inventor assembly. Um, similarly with the AutoCAD electrical, right? If we go and look at um, our electrical design, oh, sorry. Um, we can go grab the electrical design as well and see what's associated with that, you know, the all these things. Again, you've got a big list of files here. You can control what people can see through this thin client too, so they're not overwhelmed with a lot of stuff, right? But here's the schematic that they could even download if they needed to, right? You need to look at the top level assembly. You can view that. So again, no matter where this stuff comes from, it's all consumed in the same way, right? Even down to the point where we can view that part file and its NC file is right there. So somebody could call it this thin client, download the NC file, load it into the controller, and now they're making parts, right? And I think the best thing about this Vault environment is that viewers are free. Um, so as many people need to view this stuff, they can. And then if you need to share this data downstream, one last thing, bill of materials, we gotta get this bill of materials delivered to somebody. I talk to people about like that all the time. Um, a lot of places, they will give a piece of paper and somebody retypes it in, some people might have a spreadsheet somewhere. If you're using Vault, you have a couple different routes. One, you could export the bill of materials data to a CSV file, right? That lets you control the output. But Vault has an API, a very open API. And if you're using, depending on what you're using, like PLM, PRP, you can automatically port that bill of materials to your say PLM system, in this case, Fusion 360 Manage. So my system's designed to do that automatically. So whenever I release something, the bomb automatically gets transferred up to Fusion Manage, right? And that's what's happening in this case, um, where if we go and look for our printer assembly, right? Search, we don't need to look 
you just search. Um, all the information about our assembly is there, our bill of materials is there, right? So that same bomb we saw in Vault, except now this is an enterprise-wide business system where we can do enterprise-wide change management. It's easier to use, it's much more accessible. So we took our engineering information, did all our engineering work, and just by doing our day-to-day -day engineering task, this data ended up in our PLM system, not just um, our bill of materials, but also our PDF, our DWFs for viewables, the step file. So Vault within engineering is a fantastic tool. It has some of its own tools to help share that data outside, but it also can be easily extended into other business systems so that you know, if 90% of the company uses Fusion Manage for all of their stuff um, and they don't want to dig, dig into Vault at all, that's fine. Engineering has the tool it needs in Vault and just by doing your day-to-day -day work, all of your data gets communicated to the rest of the business, regardless of where it came from. So that was the idea for today's presentation, right? Um, there are more to engineering deliverables than just drawings. Um, managing that data can be tricky. Um, I didn't really talk about it explicitly, but in my experience, in many organizations, the mechanical design is pretty disjointed and disconnected from the electrical design. Those groups don't often talk or talk very well, right? Having a common tool set can either help bridge that divide or mask that divide. You know, people outside of engineering, they don't care where the data comes from. They just want to have it. This system can combine it all. Even if the groups work disjointedly, eventually when everything gets released, the consumer has a clear unified picture from the same place. Right? Um, and with Vault, it is possible to deliver a complete electrical, electromechanical design um, with a single tool. With that, we'll open up for additional questions. So I see another question has come in. What can you advise an electrical engineering student in Uganda, Africa? That's a great question. Um, here, Hagerman, we only primarily do business here in the US. Um, if you're an electrical engineering, I'm a mechanical engineer by background too, so I don't have a lot of like electrical engineering advice to give. Um, I am older though, so when I was going to school, when I was a student, um, Google wasn't a thing. Uh, I actually took a course called Intro to the World Wide Web. That's how long ago I was in college. Um, the internet is obviously a fantastic resource. Um, there are lots of great resources uh, on YouTube and other places. Um, I know here at Hagerman, we typically, we commonly put on webcasts. You might look through our other webcasts for electrical work. Um, the work we do is very specifically targeted to controls, I would say. So depending on the, the specific area of electrical engineering you're getting into, um, our resources might not be um, all that useful. But if you're looking to get into, uh, you know, designing industrial control systems, I think AutoCAD Electrical is a great tool. I think uh, Autodesk does have some discounted or maybe even free software for students. Um, and proficiency with a tool like AutoCAD Electrical. I will say I've learned a lot about electrical engineering and schematic design just from having to learn how to use AutoCAD Electrical. It's been interesting. So. All right, it's been a little while since I've seen any other questions come in and we're right here at the top of the hour. So I think actually we'll go ahead and wrap it up.